This week on Conundrums, we'll be talking with Melissa Hovey of the Search for Bigfoot blog. Melissa's been given a photo of what may be an actual Bigfoot. We'll take a look at the photo and we'll hear the story behind it next on Conundrums. Welcome back to Conundrums. We're talking with Melissa Hovey, who's been given a photograph of what may be an actual Bigfoot. And we're going to discuss the origins of that photo and how she came about getting this photo in her possession. Melissa, thank you for joining us on Conundrums. Thank you for having me. Um, let's, go back, uh, let's go back four years when we start out now and talk about this photo, okay? It's four years ago. You get a photo of what supposedly is Bigfoot. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get the photo from? Can you say? Um, I cannot uh, tell you the name of the person, but I can tell you that uh, it came to me in email. Um, mm -hmm. Just out of the blue. Just simply out of the blue. Okay. And this is a very, what appears to be a very clear photo. It's the back of the Bigfoot. We're showing it now. Um, tell me what you thought when you first saw this photograph. Oh, wow. Um... Well, my expectations before opening the photograph were nothing like the reality. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, at first I just I just sat there. I mean, I at first well, actually when I opened it up, I actually pushed myself away from my computer desk because I'm so used to opening up photographs of you know the best Bigfoot photo since the Patterson Gimlin film, and it turns out to be red circles and you know dark spots and trees and bushes and whatever. Right. I opened up this photograph and I thought well, wait a minute, you know, this is not what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. And then I thought, you know, instantly, because I'm very skeptical of everything that I see and, um, and, and here. And I looked at the photograph and I thought, this guy's got to be yanking my chain. He's got to be messing with me. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and stared at it and stared at it. And, and I just thought, this is just unbelievable. Why, you know, what I wanted to know what was going on. Right. My skeptical side kicked in, and I wanted to know what was going on. And I thought, if somebody's yanking my chain, I'm going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Now, was so, this just a single photograph? Did you get a set of photos or just the one? No, there's only the one photograph, um, but he did tell me that this was one in a series mm -hmm. of photos. And you've not, have you seen the series of photos? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're given this one photo anonymously through email, or, or was there a name attached to the email? There was a name attached, okay. but you know I don't tell people that because I don't know that it's really his name. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, what, I might as well say that it's anonymously because I don't really know who it is. Okay, all right. And so you released this photo after four years this week. You put the photo yeah. out there because you're trying to find who took the photo, right? Yeah, I wanted him to contact me. Over the course of the last four years, I've been doing everything I could to get this guy to email me back. We had a really good exchange going for about two weeks, mm -hmm. two to three weeks. It started in about January of 2008. Mm -hmm. And then he had told me that he had been on a website and, or a, a blog talk chat room and was listening to these people discuss how Bigfoot can disappear and, and yada, yada, yada. And, and he emailed me and he said, you know what? He says, I don't want people to find out who I am and think that I'm crazy. Right. You know, he was, I don't, I don't think I want anything to do with this. And I emailed him back and I said, well, you know, well, he asked me, he says, you know, are people going to think I'm crazy? And I emailed him back and I said, I don't know what people are going to think when they see the photo. Mm -hmm. I said, but I said, nobody will know who you are. I said, cause I won't give them your name. I said, the only way they'll know who you are is if you out yourself. Mm -hmm. I said, I would suggest that you not do that. I said, but cause I always protect my witnesses mm -hmm. and, um, but, you know, he said, okay, well, give me a couple of days to think about it, and I'll, I'll get back with you. So a couple of days came and went, and then finally he emailed me back, and, and he said, I'm sorry, I, I can't do this. He just said, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And he was gone. And I've spent the last four years emailing the email account 
that I have and, you know, begging him practically to me because if this guy is a hoaxer, mm-hmm. I guarantee you he is the best hoaxer we've come across. Mm-hmm. If this is legit, holy cow. I mean, it's just, what, what am I supposed to do? Just sit on it and, and hopefully someday it'll show up again? I mean, that just that doesn't make any sense to me because if this guy's a hoaxer, mm-hmm. the people in this community need to know. I mean, it's not about my motivation. It's not about what I want to get out of this. It's about trying to warn people if this guy's a hoaxer, you better look out, and this is what it's probably going to look like. Mm. But I don't know that he is a hoaxer. Okay. Um, the photograph itself, there's been, since you put it out, only for, what, the last couple of days now, um, there's been a lot of speculation about it. A lot of people have taken a look at it, including Bill Munns and some other special effects individuals who are saying that it's fake. Do you think it's fake, or do you think that their uh, analogy is correct, that it could be fake? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, I've heard um, more people who are in the special effects business who say that, you know, if this is a hoax, Mm -hmm. that this is a very expensive hoax. Mm -hmm. And more than once I've heard to the tune of more than $100,000, which to me makes absolutely no sense. Because they said that in this, if this is a hoax, they said that each one of those hairs had to have been individually punched. Hmm. They said this makes this a very expensive costume, and I've I've read this from people I haven't even solicited it from, that are just out there discussing it now, mm-hmm. and also other people that I've had look at the photo over the course of the last four years, and they've said this is really expensive. Wow, the photo itself appears to be cropped tightly around the the animal. You can't see anything around it, only that there's some foliage in front of it. Did it come to you cropped this way, or yes. did you do that? No, no, it came to me that way. Okay. So. He, was, uh, he was concerned that there might be information in there mm-hmm. that might give away his location. Right, something in the foreground or something in the background, rather, that, uh, right. that could indicate. In the upper right corner, there's something that looks like maybe it's a house in the distance. So I guess he was afraid yeah. that that's what would, you know, would reveal where he lives or something. Right. There's also well, been know, a question it's... as to why the, the, the uh, creature, it, first of all, it's the very back side of the creature there's no angle to it at all it's almost as if it stepped in front of the camera and just stood there long enough to have its picture taken and then the bushes are directly in front of it you think maybe it was what was it doing there if if you can speculate um huh okay well the way i look at it is okay is like this okay even if this was a real animal or a clever hoax, mm-hmm. you know, full body or whatever. We don't know the distance between the camera and the figure itself because the the photo is cropped. Right. And so we have no way of knowing the actual distance between the two things. And he had said something to me in one of the emails about how um, there was the the circumstances surrounding the picture being taken. Mm-hmm. Would would probably change the way that we look at the research. It, he said that the the situation s- surrounding the picture being taken was extreme. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that means, but I have to wonder if it doesn't have something to do with maybe the bush itself, because that seems to be a focal point within the photograph. What is the animal doing? Mm-hmm. I think if, if this is an animal, a walking animal. I think that it may have bypassed, went right in front, maybe bypassed in front of the camera to the side and then went to that bush. I don't know. I mean, all of this is speculation. I have no idea. But, you know, I've seen a lot of game cam photos of the back ends of deer and bear and, and everything else. I mean, I, and I was saying to somebody today and I'm publishing it on my blog, you know, maybe they're trying to give us a message. <laughs> so I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, to me, that, to me, that doesn't seem like it's... Um, that it's real concerning that it's the back of the animal because he said there are successive shots and and one uh, other question was why would you point a game camera at a bush but like you said we don't know what's outside the frame we don't it's been cropped in so tightly there may right. be other things there and it may have even been zoomed in somewhat you know so we don't know exactly the position of where that camera was well and some people are speculating to the type of bush uh-huh. and it looks pretty close I mean, in my opinion, I don't know because the leaves don't look don't look real. They look 
the leaves that people are comparing this bush to, mm -hmm. in my opinion, look a lot bigger than the ones on the actual bush or tree itself. But according to these people, this type of bush produces a fruit. Mm -hmm. So this might be, I mean, we don't know. Could this be what, would, what was causing the interest of this animal? So mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you know what type of bush it is? Mm, gosh. Uh, I just read it the other night. I don't remember the name of it. But all I know is it was a, uh, a bush that was started in, uh, that was, it grew in China. They propagated it to Japan. And now it's here in the United States, but primarily grows in California. Hmm. That uh, brings up another question. Do you have any indication from this individual that, uh, of where the photo may have been taken? No. None whatsoever? No. Okay, and that's, of course, something that, that you're questioning now. The reason why you've... Well, let's, let's talk about that. Why did you wait four years and suddenly release this photo? Because I wanted him to come forward. Mm -hmm. I wanted more information about the photo. I wanted to know the circumstances surrounding the photo. Because to me, that's more important than, than anything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, throwing the photograph out there is, you know, will give people to talk, something to talk about and hopefully, you know, open their eyes to the realities of what can be done, you know, if this is a hoax. Mm -hmm. But in the same respect, I want more information. I want to know, you know, what is the goal here? You know, is this a real animal? Can you give me more photographs? You know, what's going on? You know, if this is a hoax, why did you do it? Mm -hmm. I want to know those answers. You, he said that there was a, other photos. Now, this yeah. was in 2008 when you were originally communicating with him. He said right. there were other photos in a series. You've never seen those photos. You have no, no idea how many there were. No, none. No, mm -hmm. he won't tell me that either. <laughs> he's, he's a very secretive individual. And, I mean, but... Anybody who works with witnesses mm -hmm. will tell you that oftentimes they are. I mean, you have to practically beg and plead for some of the simplest information because they're just so worried that somebody's going to figure out who they are. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's something that all of us struggle with as, as researchers. So, in my opinion, his secretiveness really isn't a surprise. And I really, you know, I, I didn't, it didn't raise alarm flags in my head when I was dealing with him initially. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, because I've, I've dealt with this before. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the, 2008, you, you're given this photograph. It's been four years. You decide that you're going to release it. Do you hear from him then? And tell, has, tell us, how did that happen? Yeah. Um, I first put out something on my blog. Mm -hmm. uh, and pretty much an open letter to him. Because um, this has to be figured out one way or the other. You know, I'm not doing anything to hurt him mm -hmm. or anybody else. It's just there are answers that we need. I need. You know, he brought this to me. You know, and I explained that to him. I said, you know, you came to me. Mm -hmm. You asked for my help in helping to protect this animal. And I said, I can't do that. And I can't, you know, I, I can't turn my back on this situation. I think it's just too important, mm -hmm. you know. And um, finally he emailed me. He sent a comment into my blog, which I did not publish. Mm -hmm. And um, we started talking back and forth after that. And um, I, it was pretty tense, you know. He wasn't, uh, wasn't real clear about, you know, why he was concerned. Although I, I asked him, you know, why, the, you know, why he wouldn't talk to me. Mm -hmm. But he wouldn't answer me. And he just, you know, he said he just didn't want any part of this anymore. And he was upset. And, you know, he just... You know, he just wanted no part of it. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'm not going to, my final email to him was, I'm not going to include your name. I said, nobody's going to know who you are. I said, and I said, I've got to do this. I said, because I can't get information from you about whether or not this is true or not. Mm -hmm. I said, and I have a responsibility to other witnesses and to other researchers. I said, I can't keep this a secret anymore. I said, if you're not going to give me information about this, I have no choice. You and did. I published it. Um, did he ask you not to publish it? Yeah. But you did anyway? I did because part of the agreement was that if he wanted me not to publish it, if he did not, if he wanted to stop me from doing so, then he had to agree to work with me. Mm -hmm. You know, and 
I was serious about that because I have sat here and sat here and sat here on this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's trying to refine his craft. I don't know what he's doing. And, and he just, he absolutely refused to do that. He mm -hmm. said that he was not going to do that and that pretty much, you know, I had to wait and see what was going to happen next. I mean, he said that he may contact me again in April. Mm -hmm. May not. So I told him, I said, you know, if you're not going to work with me on this and give me information about this so that I can figure out what's going on here, I said, I have no choice. I have to warn people, you know, if let them decide what this is. Because I don't know. I'm not a special effects person. Mm -hmm. So um, when he asked you uh, not to do it, did you consider not uh, not putting the picture out there? Oh Lord! Oh, I, I'm telling you right now, this has been the longest week of my entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, this this household, I mean, it, with me and those that that know me, and it was really tough. It was it was really hard for me, and and it was hard for me because. I value that trust mm -hmm. that people put in us, mm -hmm. you know, and then at the same time, I have this inner struggle saying, but, you know, other witnesses have trusted you and they want you to do the right thing, mm -hmm. you know, and other researchers. I mean, I, I could not live with myself if this photo had, had popped out onto the internet as proof of Bigfoot mm -hmm. and it turned out to be a big hoax. And I've seen this coming. Mm -hmm. I couldn't live with myself. I'm, you know, I'm not these people that just say, okay, I'm just going to sit back and do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. That's not me. That's not who I am. I really struggled. I mean, I, I, I uh, it's been a lot of sleepless nights here in this house trying for me to figure out what was right and what wasn't. And I made my decision. And once I made my decision, I stuck with it because it's about more than just me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm trying to explain that to people, and I don't think people get it. It's not about me mm -hmm. and what I want. It's what I'm trying to do, you know, and mm -hmm. to make sure that the validity of our research holds up. And I don't think people really think about that a lot. Yeah. So, so yeah, on, it, it's, on that it's point, tough. on that point, um, what do you say to individuals who say you made a promise not to not to release this? You did anyway on your own. What do you say to them who say, well, now you can't be trusted? Um, initially, the promise to him was to never disclose who he was. Mm -hmm. And and I will say this, I will be releasing another blog tonight. Okay. Um, the gentleman in question emailed me the night of the photo release. And um, there's more information that I will be releasing tonight. And we'll answer some questions for people. And he is going to continue working with me. Releasing the photo was not his issue. The, mm -hmm. the issue for him was his privacy. Right. That's key to these people. And I totally understand that. And I totally get that. Mm -hmm. And that is something I never would have done. Mm -hmm. And to him, it was about his privacy. Right. And I think that I, I held true to my standards, which was to protect him first. This wasn't about him at this point. Because I don't know. I don't know if he's telling the truth. I don't know if this is a hoax, you know? So mm -hmm. why bring, you know, hellfire and brimstone on this guy if he's really not doing anything wrong? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Are there, uh, w throughout this whole thing through four years, are there red flags that have come up that made you think, well, maybe this isn't real, that is, it, it's a, he's trying to pull some kind of uh, hoax on the community? You know, I would have thought that had I heard about this photograph popping up with other individuals mm -hmm. but I've only I only know of one in one other researcher that has seen this and um, I'm not going to disclose who that was but this person dismissed it and went on which okay. is fine and I would expect that of this person so <laughs> you know Okay, so in other words, he has sent this photograph to you, but he also sent it to another researcher. Um, about two, about a month or two. It was late two thousand and seven. Okay. And he became very upset with this, with this researcher. Okay. Because the researcher didn't take it seriously. Um, no, it was his arrogance. Oh, okay. And his need for um, for self promotion. Okay. 
All right. Now, you've put this photo out yourself. What do you say to, to individuals who say, well, you're just promoting yourself. You're, you've got this thing. You couldn't sit on it long enough. You're wanting to pr promote Melissa Hovey, so you put this photo out there. And uh, now some people are saying one thing and some people are saying other things. How do you address that? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'll address it like this. If anybody else has a photograph that they want to send me mm -hmm. and they want me to sit on it for the rest of my life and not say anything about it to anybody, yeah. send it to someone else, please. <laughs> because I'm in this to solve this mystery. I'm not in this to get tangled up in confused webs of stories. Right. Send it to somebody else because I'm in this for a purpose. And this gets me nowhere. Mm -hmm. Nowhere. Nowhere I want to be. You know, I've had... Um, you know, with all these new Bigfoot programs and stuff coming on over the last few years, I've had emails from television producers and stuff wanting to know if I have really cool images and, and Bigfoot casts and stuff like that. And, oh, we'll pay you money to use them. And have you seen this photograph on any television shows? Hmm. No, you haven't. I don't put out this kind of stuff. I don't put out things like this for money, financial gain, or for self-promotion. I mean, I, I, I could care less about that kind of thing. I'm doing, I'm putting out information now because I think it's important that people try to at least understand and not come to their own conclusions. Because apparently people are not reading the information that I have put out mm -hmm. about this situation. So, you know, it's, I can either try to explain it and get people to actually look at it and discuss it mm -hmm. or just go and do whatever they want to do because, I mean, there's nothing I can do about, you know, about that. Okay. There's also uh, you know, been questions. You know, you're watching the Internet since this photo has come out, and so have I. And a lot of people are questioning, why did you put copyright at the bottom of the photo? Are you copywriting the photo yourself? And will you sell it to a television station or something later? No. I have no interest in selling this to anybody. Um, that's not what this is about. Mm. Uh, especially if this turns out to be a hoax. There's no way I would sell this for money. Mm -hmm. um, I only copyrighted it so that I can protect this witness who does not want to come forward. When mm -hmm. he sent it to me, he had nothing on it. There was no protection for him whatsoever on that photograph. He does not want his name used. He does not want to be identified. He does not have anything to protect him. Mm -hmm. I placed it on there. I'm putting myself and the American Bigfoot Society behind it to protect him and his interests. Should the day come that he wants to put, take this photograph and actually do something with it and create his own financial gain, whatever. If we can't prove it's a hoax, I will release it back to him and he can do with it whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. um, and for those that are concerned about it, he emailed me, like I said, the night of the photo release, and he said nothing about it. Mm -hmm. okay. He knows that I am trying to protect his interest, mm -hmm. which is why he is still going to work with me, I hope. Mm -hmm. I, hear, I hope I hear from him again soon. So, but he had said something about April. Do you think that you're going to continue a dialogue with him now, or do you think that uh, he's gone again forever, or maybe you'll... April? What's up with April? I don't know. Um, I hope to hear from him again. You know, he said sometime in the spring, you know, April, May, you know, somewhere around there. Um, I don't know. He may contact me again sooner. Mm -hmm. I, was just, I was just happy to see the, the first email, the night of the photo, at least. Mm-hmm. On no, the, sorry, on the uh, photo itself, um, something you and I were discussing on the phone before we did the show, there appears to be a scar. Let's talk about that scar. What do you think that is? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think it's part of a costume or it's real? Or Just discuss where the scar is and your thoughts on it. Um, it's on the back uh, towards the, the center left side of the animal. Um, near the spine. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be honest with you, I never noticed it until mm -hmm. my fiance actually pointed it out to me uh, when he's seen the photograph. I mean, he lives here with me. He's going to see the photograph. <laughs> so he actually noticed it. Mm -hmm. And he pointed it out to me. And I was like, well, I'll be darned. I never even, I never even noticed that. And um, other people have noticed it as well. I don't know. Um, I spoke with, um, well, I had one gentleman. You know, everybody keeps talking about Bill Munz. Mm -hmm. There's more than one opinion so far that's been published about this. I've also have an opinion posted by Dave Conover mm -hmm. um, and also Rick Knoll, mm -hmm. who analyzed the photograph. 
and Dave Conover works in special effects makeup and things like that for the creature you know industry mm-hmm. and um, he noticed that scar and he said that you know in for him that was odd that it was subdued right. he said you know in their field they build things up to get he said in this situation he says he did the exact opposite which goes against what they do mm-hmm. you know in the in the movie industry in the creature suit making industry so I don't know. I mean, that's that's another one. And people are saying that they see things like a tick, um, some skin pat or some skin differences around the the back of the the arm towards the armpit mm-hmm. in the back. Um, <coughs> I mean, it's it's been pretty interesting. But I've noticed that what people one what other people are noticing now that it's out in the public, what people are pointing out. Other people had noticed before the mm. photograph was put out. So, what I'm hearing from people that are actually taking the time to examine this photograph is they're noticing the very same things that we noticed. Mm-hmm. So that's to me that's that's actually pretty interesting. And the comments by the witnesses, you know, people who claim to have been a witness to this animal, have just been, you know, some of them say, yeah, that's that's pretty dang close, and they, they're pointing out the differences in what they seen. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, others are like, no, that's not what I've seen at all. And I do expect regional differences. I think you'd be foolish not to. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's it's been pretty interesting listening to the people who haven't just outright dismissed it. And they're, I often wonder, I say to myself, over the last four years, you know, is this going to end up being more like a, a tool to help us with witnesses? So mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if, what is going to happen next. <laughs> There was also some question as to l- the length of the hair on the uh, animal. Apparently, uh, some have pointed out that it all seems very even, and that wouldn't occur in an actual animal. Uh, and there's also uh, some fur that's in the, the creature industry that you can purchase. It's called werewolf fur. And it, individuals in the industry have said, well, this is identical to that kind of fur. Uh, have you heard anything from from your uh, your contacts in the uh, so, uh, the the uh, special effects industry that might indicate something about that fur and whether or not it can be can be purchased. Um, it can be purchased. Um, I don't know if it can be purchased outside of the movie industry. That's mm-hmm. something I don't know. Um, that's kind of why I went to the people with the knowledge, you know, behind these types of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, all I know about this is that if. If this was a costume, it was a very expensive costume. And even one gentleman posted uh, that he went to one of his special effects guys, and even he said that this would have been a very expensive costume. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that this was something that was pre-made off the shelf. I think that this is something that, if this is a hoax, somebody took the time to really painstakingly build this thing up. Mm -hmm. I don't think this was fur off the shelf. Can you speculate as to why someone would have done it this way to perpetuate a hoax? Contact you, give you a photo, wait four years. What's up with that? <laughs> you got me. You know, and as far as the, you know, you brought up the length of the hair and stuff like that. I mean, I've looked at a lot of pictures of gorillas and chimpanzees over the year, over the years. And uh, I got to tell you, gorillas pretty much always look like they've had a nice little haircut. I mean, they're, they're, their hair looks pretty damn uniform. And... Even with chimpanzees, I mean, it's my hair keeps growing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it won't stop growing. I look at a chimpanzee or a gorilla and stuff like that, and it looks like their hair never grows any longer than you know certain length, and then that's it. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, I I think that um, some of that is speculation, though. Yeah. I'm sorry. What was your next question? Well, over the uh, over the years, over the four years, you had indicated that some people had seen the photo. Who have you? shown it to before you released it and what were their uh, their opinions of it um the people that i've released it to over the years are basically you know within the board of directors for the aibr mm-hmm. i've allowed uh, rick Knoll to see it i've allowed um i'm sorry the american bigfoot society i'm okay and then i seen uh, or i showed it to uh rick Knoll. Mm-hmm. i've showed it to bill munns uh, Dave Conover, um, uh, you know, my close friends, my very close friends, and that were that was viewed from a computer. Mm-hmm. Um, 
trying to think here. I mean, it really, it's not a whole lot of people that have seen this photograph. Was there any pressure on you to release this photo from people around you? No. None no. whatsoever? No. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. No, everybody just kept saying, you know, Melissa, it's, you know, it's up to you. I mean, you need to, to do what you think is right. And is, was there any particular reason why this week, you know, why you suddenly, well, not suddenly, but just decided, okay, we need to get a conclusion to this, wait seven days, put it out. What was your thinking process behind that? Why, why now? Why now? Yeah. It's a good question. <laughs> why now? Because I had just written an article for my blog. And in that article, I discussed why I get so upset with people who say they have all this information and they won't discuss it mm -hmm. and they won't show their proof, yet they claim they want to help save this animal from destruction. And um, I, I was listening to this, you know, reading these comments from these people and, you know, in these people who talk about how this animal can disappear and can wormhole jump and the whole nine yards. And then these people were turning around and trying to attack me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, you know what? Enough is enough. And I wrote this article and I said, you know what? And this is the reason why this witness said he took off because he didn't want to be compared to these people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that yanks my chain. That does. That makes me very upset that anybody who's witness to something like this feels that they have to hide. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, come on, you know, let's get real about this. If this animal can disappear, okay, fine, have that thought, but you show me one other animal in this world that has that ability. And if you want to just describe it to a Bigfoot, then tell me why. Mm -hmm. If you can't tell me why, I don't want to hear it, and don't blame me, because you can't get your point across. Mm -hmm. Because to me, that's, that's just silly. Since the photo has been released now, it's been out for a couple of days, have there been comments that, that hurt you, hurt your feelings, that you read something about it? No, not really. Um, I mean, I laugh at the people who, who are saying that, um, you know, this is a hoax, mm -hmm. that I'm trying to hoax this. Because, <laughs> you know what, I mean, that tells me right there that people don't read. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had put out a blog before I released the photo saying, you know, I'm going to say this now because I know that once I release the photograph, nobody's going to care about the information. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, nobody read the information. They looked at the photo, took 10 minutes to view it, maybe. And then went to the various blogs and said, oh, it's a hoax. Oh, it's a hoax. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, you know what, if you, whatever, you know, those are the people I don't pay attention to. Why do you think that a good, clear, crisp photo of Bigfoot is, is so rejected by, by people? I mean, that's exactly what we're looking for, something like this, something that's very clear. And yet when it comes out there, the immediate reaction, tear it to pieces. Why is that? Oh, I had the same reaction. I mean, I got to be honest, I had the same reaction, you know, after the shock wore off, because you just don't expect to see something that clear, mm -hmm. you know, you know, and, and some of my friends and I, we were talking about this, you know, after the release and, and we all said, you know, we always said that if a clear, you know, as much as we complain that we don't have any clear video or clear photographs of this animal, we've always said that if clear audio or clear video or photographs ever did come out, we wouldn't believe it because it would be too good to be true. Mm -hmm. You know, 40 years from the Patterson film and we're left with blob squatches and plaster casts, which, you know, I love basically. I, I mean, that's my world. But, you know, I mean, it's, it's just really. It's frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, it really. <laughs> yeah, it's very frustrating. Yeah, everyone screams and begs for the clearest picture of Bigfoot, and as soon as you hand them one, oh, that's fake. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's been a lot of it too. And I, I I've really been enjoying those comments. Mm -hmm. and, oh, it's it's you know it's too clear, can't be real. You know, it's it's totally faked. And I'm like, well, if technology, and we all talk about this, if technology is catching up, you know, what do you think is going to happen? Mm -hmm. Are we going to dismiss every photograph or every video based on its clarity now? I mean, before we dismissed them because they were too blurry. So now are we going to start to dismiss them because they're too clear? I mean, we need to get our priorities straight in this. I mean, yeah. come on. 
you were you were commenting on comments that you've read is there anything that comes to mind something you read that just either either ticked you off or made you laugh about about people talking about this picture so far uh, i mean i i've heard it all you know i mean honestly i mean there's nothing that i and all of my friends and, and my fiance wayne haven't said you know in the course of four years there's nothing that we haven't discussed that we haven't said we haven't questioned we haven't doubted you know mm -hmm. so i'm sitting here reading these these forums and it you know i'm sure they're thinking that i'm hearing this for the first time no it's not because we've all said the very same things you know it's got to be hoax it's it's too easy it's you know it's just too there so i mean it's we're saying the same things mm -hmm. we've said the same things but like I said in, in the blog before I posted the, the photo, this photo will rise or fall on its merits, not because of anything I say. And nobody's going to believe what I have to say because they're going to think I'm biased. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, I don't know what it is. So, Have there been any trust issues since you've released the photo with other researchers, you know, saying that? saying maybe because he asked you not to release it, you did anyway? Is there any trust issues that's come up so far? No. No, and I have, there's only been one person who made a comment, and that person was very wrong, but, um, and, you know, and I'm saying that that person was wrong because the witness has contacted me, mm -hmm. you know, and I say this to people all the time, you should never discuss things that you don't have all the information about, mm -hmm. point blank, that's it, mm -hmm. don't stick your nose into something if you don't have all the facts, and I have not told people everything that I know for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. And one of those things that I have not talked to people about is the witness. So, I mean, they really don't know the type of relationship and what's gone on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I, just, I get frustrated. <laughs> I understand. Well, let's just, let's go back to the photo then itself. Um, several special effects people have looked at it. Um, have you done any analysis yourself on it? Something that you've done to maybe see if you can glean more out of the photo than what you can just see with the naked eye? Well, I'm not a photo expert. I, mm -hmm. I'm not a techie person at all. Um, I know how to uh, download the photograph. I know how to open the photograph. Mm -hmm. um, my paint used to have a thing where I could switch the colors. Uh -huh. But I'm on Windows 7 now, and I can't find it. Um, so I've had to rely on people who know a lot more about photographs and, you know, editing stuff than I do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've never really, because I don't know how to do it. I, I don't know. I mean, that's not my thing. Well, another question would be the, the photo that you, you, originally you released it with a watermark, then you put another one out that didn't have the watermark on it because it, it interfered with the image. Um, right. Was that the... It resolution of the original or is the original larger do you know that um, I, I honestly as far as you. what you were sent um, I've actually been really surprised that people are complaining about the resolution because mm -hmm. I mean you remove the stuff from it and on, on my computer it looks perfect mm -hmm. I mean we can enlarge it and get get a lot of detail out of that thing and it doesn't start to really get grainy or pixelated mm -hmm. so I mean, I, I don't understand when I'm, I'm reading these things and people are saying, oh, this is really, you know, poor resolution. I can hardly see anything. I, I don't know what they're talking about. I've released um, a larger one for people to look at. Um, but, I mean, I don't, I don't really know how to help that situation because that's not my, my thing. Are you making the, um, the, at least the original that you were sent? by email are you making it available as a download for anyone to download it or would you have to just get it off your blog or how can someone go about getting this photo to look at it um they would have to go to my blog or i mean it's everywhere mm. i mean people are allowed to download it i have no problem with that i mean you can analyze it yourself do with it you know as as long as the copyright remains for the protection of the witness mm -hmm. that is paramount here because I don't want this photograph used for the next great hoax in any way. Right. You know, I mean, we really need to start taking that kind of stuff seriously. Um, but, I mean, people, if you find a great image of it somewhere, I know the Bigfoot Forums has it. 
And uh, there's been a lot of really cool things that they've done. Some of their people have done with the photograph, with the contrast and, mm -hmm. and things of those nature, of that nature. Rick Knoll um, did, some, did some work with the photograph and it's on my blog in the opinions article. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's, it's out there. It's, it's everywhere now. Do you think it's fair to compare it to the Patterson-Gimlin images, the Patterson-Gimlin film? No, no. Why two not? Two different mediums. It's two, two totally different mediums. This is a still image. Mm -hmm. The Patterson-Gimlin film is a moving either man in a suit or a living, breathing Bigfoot. I, with that, you can at least see movement. You can see flow. You can, you can see the head and, and everything turn and the legs move and stuff. With this, this is a still image. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, put this on the level of the Patterson film, and I really wish people would stop that. I really wish they would. Have people been begging you to release more photos like you can? Uh, well, they, you know, people are nice about it, and they, they ask me if there's more, and I tell them, no, I'm sorry, there's not. There's, mm -hmm. Right now, I don't have any. I'm not, I don't know about the witness, mm -hmm. but speaking for myself, I don't have any more. So... Do you think that if this is a hoax, that in some way you're helping the hoaxer by putting this out there? No, I think that um, I think this community is smart enough that they will take this photograph and they will analyze it and they will pull it pull it apart until it's pieces and shreds until they can figure out what this is. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we've been studying the Patterson film for a long time, mm -hmm. and you know, it's I I I don't think that I am causing a problem. I think, I'm hoping that this will give a heads up. I mean, because, you know, if people out there really think that this is a legitimate hoax, hey, we got a lot to worry about because this is a good hoax if that's what this is. And so. if, if, do you think that there's some way to prove that it's real? Um, would there be a way to um, authenticate the person that took it and then the situation, do you think it could be proved to be real in any way? Um... I guess that depends on the witness. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's, that's totally going to be up to him. Mm -hmm. You know, whether or not he, he contacts me again. Um, I have the feeling that he will because he did tell me that he would, he would be in touch again. So, um, I, that's, that's, I mean, that's really up to him. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to be that, that person that authenticates this one way or the other. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do that. Do you think... Um and you and, I have, you and I have talked about this. Do you think that a photograph will prove the existence of Bigfoot? Any photograph? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I've never thought that that was going to happen. I mean, so, you know, when I, people have said to me, when you, post, when you put this out there, did you think that this was going to be the, the evidence? And I said, no. <laughs> no, I have no, no. I did not, that hadn't even crossed my mind. Because mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't prove something is real when it's not moving. Right. You know? And with this photograph, you don't see the face. But I guarantee you, if, 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 uh, if I'm lucky enough, and hopefully one day, you know, maybe he'll send me some more photographs, and maybe the next time it'll be the animal's face. And then, when, if, I, you know, if he ever gives me permission to post those, I guarantee you what'll happen, though, is people will look at it and they'll go, you know, the eyes look a little too, too shiny. Mm -hmm. Those are fake eyes. It's got to be a hoax. <laughs> Suppose he sent you. Suppose he sent you additional photos, but said, "Don't publish them." Would you sit on them again for another four years? I would tell him, "Don't send me additional photographs if you're going to ask me to sit on these for, mm -hmm. you know, forever." I'm not. I'm not going to do that again. Mm -hmm. He's. I mean, I have had my fill of the, you know, sit on this and never do anything with it. I. I've. I've uh, I was placed in that position. It was not a position I asked to be put in. I accepted it because I am a researcher, and mm -hmm. I do respect these people. But, you know, there comes a point where, you know, push has to come to shove. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, you've got to do something. You've got to make a decision, and you've got to do something. I think it's important to note here that, you know, you're not trying to exploit this thing. What you, what you were doing originally was put the photograph out there so you could draw the person who took the photographs, draw yeah. them back towards you, and you could get you know, reestablish communication with them. Uh, a lot of people think that you've just put it out there for promotional reasons, or that you're 
you sat on it for an amount of time, decided to be dishonest and put it out there um, to, uh, you know, to promote yourself. Um, I've actually, I've already asked you how you felt about that, but how has it affect you, affected you now a couple of days later that it's been out? Um, you know, emotions. you know, I'll, I'll answer that question like this. You know, the only thing about this right now that makes that affects me one way or the other mm -hmm. is I still have all of my friends, mm -hmm. and this witness contacted me again. Mm -hmm. After all of this, I still have that witness in the hope that maybe someday I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Right. People in this are always going to say whatever they want to say about somebody, mm -hmm. and regardless of how much. I try to correct them on the, you know, and tell them the truth. They're going to believe what they want to believe. I still have all of my friends. I have more friends now. And I have this witness. And that is the most important thing to me right now is that this witness still trusts that I will do what's best, what's in his best interest and mm -hmm. protect him. Mm -hmm. That's what we should be caring about. How, how do you think that this photo is going to, um, affect the um the study of bigfoot does it help does it hurt is it just more noise oh i don't know i boy that's that's a good question i don't really know i mean because it's i think it's going to create a lot of talk it's mm -hmm. going to create a lot of discussion mm -hmm. um about the possibilities i mean if it's real and if it's a hoax i mean there's you know you're talking a lot of conversation on either sides of this i mean I mean, it's, I think that maybe down the road it could be used as a tool mm -hmm. to, you know, when you were talking to witnesses and, you know, witnesses that have actually had sightings as a comparison tool, maybe, mm -hmm. um, you know, because I've actually used that with some witnesses and, um, they, you know, they've just seen it on a laptop and their, the reactions have been really interesting. I mean, blow me away type of interesting because they sit there and their initial reaction is shock. Mm -hmm. That's always the initial reaction. Um, I know of one person who cried and I know I've said this in front of other witnesses and when they stop staring and start talking again mm -hmm. and it's always the same thing they start pointing at it and they're like okay well this is yeah that muscle yeah that's really similar that hair color was just a little bit darker what I saw but you know, the hair type, you know, the way it looks, the length is, that's pretty similar. You know, that's really similar to what I see. You know, they, they compare, they make comparisons, they make changes, you know, to, to what they see compared to what this looks like, which I find fascinating because if people were just simply looking at it because they thought that it made it interesting or because it added credibility to their sighting, they would either say, yeah, that's it, or no, that's not. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't sit there and dissect it and compare it to what they seen. Mm -hmm. And that's what these people are doing. And I find that incredible. You and know, it's, I, it was a reaction I wasn't expecting, to be honest with you. That makes it a very useful tool, as you said. Okay, yeah. Melissa, you, you've dealt with this for four years. You've looked at this photo over and over again. What do you think it is, real or fake? <laughs> I honestly don't know. I know there's a lot of people who think that I have a, an opinion one way or the other. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I don't know. There's just not enough information. I look at the photograph and I, you know, like everybody else, you know, a lot, well, I should say not everybody else because there's a lot of people who think it's a hoax, but many other people that I know look at it and they tell me that they do the same thing I do. They stare at the photograph and say, would you just turn around? You know, it's like it could just turn around any second, mm -hmm. whether it's real or not, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, honestly, I don't know because I, I do consider myself very skeptical. I mean, I'm, an, I'm a paralegal by trade. I've done a lot of investigation work. I look at this and I say, you know, it, it really could go either way. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Which is, like I said, one of the primary reasons why I released the photograph. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know. Let's suppose for a moment that it, it turns out unequivocally it's fake. How does that affect you? It doesn't. If it's fake, it's fake. Mm -hmm. Life will go on. I mean, it's it's not the end of the world. I would rather know that it was fake, you know, and have somebody prove it to me 100% mm -hmm. than to, you know, have it out there as a legitimate, 
photograph of a Bigfoot. I mean, if it's fake, let's prove that it's fake. Mm -hmm. But this whole, you know, this thing about, well, it could be this and it could be, well, no, no, no. Or just these people saying, oh, it's a hoax. Oh, it's a, fine, tell me why you think it's a hoax. Mm -hmm. You know, stop the blanket statements. Discuss this. Figure it out. That's what I want. Is this a fake? And if it's a fake, prove it to me. Prove it to the rest of this community so we can take this photograph and set it where it belongs. Mm -hmm. If we can't prove that it's a fake, then we need to still continue to analyze it. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. And there's a lot of people in this that have talents that are far beyond what I know how to do. So, I'm, and I really think we need to have an answer. Well, it's, uh, it's wonderful that you have taken the, the, you know, the, your time and, and invested your own personal energy into trying to determine what this is. And then finally put it out here for the rest of us so we can help you, you know, analyze it, look at it, figure out what it is, and uh, hopefully come to some sort of conclusion as to what this photograph represents, whether it's real or not. Um, if someone wants to communicate with you directly about the photo, about the image, how could they do that? They can, um, <coughs> they can email me at um, American Bigfoot Society at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And so is that Melissa at American Bigfoot Society? No, it's, just, it's just American, American Bigfoot Society. American Bigfoot Society at gmail.com. And your blog is the search for Bigfoot? Right, txsasquatch.blogspot.com. Okay, Melissa. Well, is there anything else you want to, to say to the public about this photo, about anything that maybe we didn't discuss, didn't cover? Um, just examine it. Mm -hmm. You know, look at it. Whether you're looking at it like a hoax, come up with reasons for why you think it's a hoax. And dismissing it out of hand isn't helping the process. That's not why I released it. You know, you're not helping. Let's, let's try to figure this out because I don't know what it is and I'm, I'm hoping somebody can figure out whether or not this is legitimate or not. I don't think we're gonna be able to prove it conclusively, mm -hmm. but you know, let's, let's discuss it. Let's talk about what this could be because I don't know. I don't know. What kind of proof would you accept either way? Well, what, what are you uh, looking for? Well, I mean, I, I, you know, that's a hard question to answer because, I mean, if somebody could come up with, with the uh, synthetic skin or the, you know, the, the, the hair, the synthetic hair and stuff like that to actually prove, you know, like this was just something that was stretched over a form, mm -hmm. you might have my interest then, you know? I mean, it's, yeah, that, that to me would be pretty mind-blowing. But so far from what I've seen from, you know, the movie industry, uh, it's, it's all really heavy, thick, you know, thick tools and, you know, and, and fur, really thick fur. So I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So I don't. Melissa, thank you for being on the show this week, and thank you for bringing this photo out to us. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, we will see you next week. On conundrums. January of 2008 mm -hmm. and then he had told me that he had been on a website and or a, a blog talk chat room and was listening to these people discuss how Bigfoot can disappear and and yada 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 and, and he emailed me and he said you know what he says I don't want people to find out who I am and think that I'm crazy right you know he was I don't I don't think I want anything to do with this and I emailed him back and I said well you know well he asked me he says you know are people gonna think I'm crazy and I emailed him back and I said I don't know what people are going to think when they see the photo. Mm -hmm. I said, but I said, nobody will know who you are. I said, because I won't give them your name. I said, the only way they'll know who you are is if you out yourself. Mm -hmm. I said, I would suggest that you not do that. I said, but because I always protect my witnesses. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, you know, he said, okay, well, give me a couple of days to think about it and I'll, I'll get back with you. So a couple of days came and went and then finally he emailed me back and and he said, I'm sorry, I, I can't do this. He just said, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And he was gone. 
and I've spent the last four years emailing the email account that I have and you know begging him practically to me because if this guy is a hoaxer, mm-hmm. I guarantee you he is the best hoaxer we've come across. Mm-hmm. If this is legit, holy cow. I mean, it's just, what, what am I supposed to do? Just sit on it and, and hopefully someday it'll show up again? I mean, that just that doesn't make any sense to me. Because if this guy's a hoaxer, the mm-hmm. people in this community need to know. I mean, it's not about my motivation. It's not about what I want to get out of this. It's about trying to warn people, if this guy's a hoaxer, you better look out, and this is what it's probably going to look like. Mm. But I don't know that he is a hoaxer. Okay. Um, the photograph itself, there's been, since you put it out, only for, what, the last couple of days now, um, there's been a lot of speculation about it. A lot of people have taken a look at it, including Bill Munns and some other special effects individuals who are saying that it's fake. Do you think it's fake, or do you think that their uh, analogy is correct, that it could be fake? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, I've heard um, more people who are in the special effects business who say that, you know, if this is a hoax, Mm -hmm. that this is a very expensive hoax. Mm -hmm. And more than once I've heard to the tune of more than $100,000, which to me makes absolutely no sense. Because they said that in this, if this is a hoax, they said that each one of those hairs. This week on Conundrums, we'll be talking with Melissa Hovey of the Search for Bigfoot blog. Melissa's been given a photo of what may be an actual Bigfoot. We'll take a look at the photo and we'll hear the story behind it next on Conundrums. Welcome back to Conundrums. We're talking with Melissa Hovey, who's been given a photograph of what may be an actual Bigfoot. And we're going to discuss the origins of that photo and how she came about getting this photo in her possession. Melissa, thank you for joining us on Conundrums. Thank you for having me. Um, let's, go back, uh, let's go back four years when we start out now and talk about this photo, okay? It's four years ago. You get a photo of what supposedly is Bigfoot. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get the photo from? Can you say? Um, I cannot uh, tell you the name of the person, but I can tell you that uh, it came to me in email, um, mm-hmm. just out of the blue, just simply out of the blue. Okay. And this is a very, what appears to be a very clear photo. It's the back of the Bigfoot. We're showing it now. Um, tell me what you thought when you first saw this photograph. Oh, wow. Um, well, my expectations before opening the photograph were nothing like the reality. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, at first I just I just sat there. I mean, I at first well, actually when I opened it up, I actually pushed myself away from my computer desk because I'm so used to opening up photographs of you know the best Bigfoot photo since the Patterson Gimlin film, and it turns out to be red circles and you know dark spots in trees and bushes and whatever. Right. I opened up this photograph and I thought well, wait a minute, you know, this is not what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. And then I thought, you know, instantly, because I'm very skeptical of everything that I see and, um, and, and here. And I looked at the photograph and I thought, this guy's got to be yanking my chain. He's got to be messing with me. Mm-hmm. And I sat there and stared at it and stared at it. And, and I just thought, this is just unbelievable. Why, you know, what I wanted to know what was going on. My skeptical side kicked in, and I wanted to know what was going on. And I thought, if somebody's yanking my chain, I'm going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Now, was this just a single photograph? Did you get a set of photos or just the one? No, there's only the one photograph, um, but he did tell me that this was one in a series Mm -hmm. of photos. And you've not, have you seen the series of photos? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're given this one photo anonymously through email, or, or was there a name attached to the email? There was a name attached, okay. but you know I don't tell people that because I don't know that it's really his name. Mm-hmm. You know, so I mean, what, I might as well say that it's anonymously because I don't really know who it is. Okay, 
All right. And so you released this photo after four years this week. You put the photo yeah. out there because you're trying to find who took the photo, right? Yeah, I wanted him to contact me. Over the course of the last four years, I've been doing everything I could to get this guy to email me back. Mm -hmm. We had a really good exchange going for about two weeks, mm -hmm. two to three weeks. It started in about June.